Hello, fellow lovers of the leaf. This is D-Love and wife. Mine is the wife right now. Uh, so I'm just out here in the garage uh, smoking on my second cigar of the day. Uh, Atta Bay Brew House. Um, it's one of my favorite, favorite cigars. Love the Vitola. Love the size of it. Um, but made a mistake. So let me tell you about the mistake that I made. So most people look at cigars as being like a whole, a part of a whole. Yeah, you have individual cigars in, in each one of your collections. But if you keep your humidor at, you know, 70 and 70, and what I try to shoot for is about 68%, and I have multiple uh, uh, humidors, uh, how do you say that word? I'll just say I have multiple meters in my humidors, right? So I'm always checking uh, the humidity, but I did not do the due diligence in actually grabbing the cigar, feeling the cigar, and seeing how it actually felt in hand. And so right now, I think the cigar is actually suffering from the fact that it has too much humidity. Let me go ahead and give this cigar a puff right now. So this is the problem that people have when it comes to expectations. When they get the cigar, I've heard a lot of people say, um, you know, a cigar should be ready as soon as it comes out. So as soon as you get it from the brick and mortar, the cigar should be ready to go. Um, that's not always going to be the case. And it's not always the case even when you keep cigars in your own humidor. You can keep them in a stable environment for, for a year, two years, give them ample enough rest time, and you can still come out with a cigar that uh, is a little bit tough to draw and the flavors are dilute. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the humidity isn't right on the cigar. So what I tend to do, and I would have caught it if I would have paid a little bit more attention, I would have dry boxed this cigar for at least a day or two. Because some wrappers absorb moisture a lot more readily than others do. And, and another problem that I have with these, like I keep a lot of my uh, Atabays in the cello. Now, there's a debate about cellophane um, and that cigars are still able to breathe, moisture is still able to pass through the cello. But here's the thing about the cello. You have to look at it as if it is a sieve. Moisture is able to pass through the sieve but it's not as freely as what you think. The moisture passes through it a lot more slowly. It's not like it's in open, open air and humidity can come and go as it pleases. That cello will lock in a lot of the moisture into a cigar uh, a lot longer. <coughs> if you have high humidity, it takes a lot longer for the humidity to come down all because the breathability of the cigar is gonna be less. It's kinda of like, imagine like this, putting a mask over your face. Are you able to breathe still? Yes. Is your breathing as good as it is when you take the mask off? No. You're, you're struggling for air a little bit. You have, to, you have to take deeper breaths a little bit more, you know what I mean? To get as much oxygen as, as uh, you would with the mask off. This isn't to get into the politics of if you think the mask works or anything like that. It's just an example. Um, so it's just the same thing as the cello. Yes, uh, moisture can pass through the cellophane, but it's not as freely as if the cigar is actually outside of the cello. And so in my opinion, what I found is that cigars actually age a lot slower while they're in the cellophane versus when they're outside of the cellophane as well as you have a little bit more moisture issues uh, with your cigars when they're in the cello. So I always find that 
if a cigar is in the cellophane, I have to dry box it a little bit more than I would if a cigar was just hanging out in my humidor at 68 and 68. Or 68 and 70, whatever, whatever you, your temperature is. Um, I find that temperature isn't so too, too important as long as you're not going too high. Um, I always try to keep it less than, you know, 72 degrees in the house. In fact, I keep my AC on on 70 at all times uh, where I keep my humid, humidors at. But the humidity issues definitely arise and some cigars you you have to um, put your hands on fill the cigar and actually see if it's ready to be smoked so I don't know if everyone's doing this because um, I'll see a lot of reviews of people uh, getting the cigar they'll talk about the draw issues and things of, things of this nature um, Cigars are very, they're, 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 they're sticklers for when they want to be smoked. They kind of tell you when they want to be smoked. And I think the way that we're being brought up to uh, smoke cigars is we want a cigar. We paid 20 bucks for this cigar. It should smoke right good and perfect right here, right now. And that's just not how, how this thing works. You really have to do your due diligence, take your time, um, keep your humidors at the right temperatures, the right humidity, and then you also have to grab and fill your cigars before you actually smoke them. So this issue right here is actually my, my fault. Uh, humidity is a little bit too high on it. Let me go ahead and hit it one more time for the one more time. Yeah, to me, the flavors are watered down. And I think that's what uh, a high moisture um, does to a cigar. It kind of dilutes the flavors that you would get from a cigar, as well as makes it hard for you to be able to draw. Um, still a nice constructed, constructed cigar, but because the cigar isn't hitting the way I want to hit it, this is what I'm going to do with this cigar. Right here. To me, it doesn't matter what a cigar costs, um, how much money you pay for it. Um, the cigar has to be uh, at its peak uh, condition. I mean, you it, if the cigar is ready, it's ready. If the cigar isn't ready, then it's not ready. And I don't smoke cigars that aren't ready and then do reviews on them. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Uh, just something to really think about. Um, like I said, take your time. Really pay attention to your cigars. Give your cigars what they actually need. And pick out your lineups the night before. So if you know that you're going to be off on, on Friday and uh, you know you're going to be smoking Friday, pick your cigars out the night before and start dry boxing them. Pick them out, fill them, fill them in between your hands, roll them around, see if you feel any tight spots. Because when you dry box a cigar, those channels, the leaf kind of swells up when it has too much moisture. So it blocks all the airflow that passes through the cigar. When you dry box it, those the leaf loses moisture, so it kind of shrinks a little bit, and it opens up some of those channels, and it allows you to be able to pull smoke through the cigar a lot more readily. Um, so definitely pay attention to each one of your cigars. Um, don't just assume that because you kept your cigar at a certain humidity and temperature that it's gonna be ready to smoke. Um, I think that's the mindset that we need to need to actually have is paying more attention to when a cigar is ready, not expecting the cigar to be ready because we paid a certain price. Uh, so 
Keep that in mind, you guys. I, I, I love the fact that, you know, only a few people only probably have, what, 192 subscribers. I actually like keeping low subscribers, man, because the people who watch me are actually learning something. I'm out here. I don't show my face. I don't, I don't really care about being too, too well-known or, or liked or anything like that. But the people who watch me, y'all are going to learn something. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm trying to teach y'all how to actually store eight cigars, look at cigars individually, know when the cigar is ready to be smoked, how to get that cigar ready, um, picking them out the night before, dry boxing the cigar overnight, if not a few days. In fact, the first cigar that I smoked today was this one. I had to stop because it started pouring down uh, rain. So this LFD Reserva Special was fire. Um, but it started really pouring down rain, so I went, hang, went in and grabbed some food. Um, but incredible, incredible cigar. This cigar, I dry boxed for about two or three days. It smoked beautifully. I noticed the same thing when it comes to some Opus. I mean, Opus is, you know, Dominican tobacco is one of those type of tobaccos where I feel loves to be smoked at a, a, a lower humidity. So learn when you need to dry box cigars. Definitely fill your cigars. Um, my personal opinion, I think cigars do a lot better when uh, they're, they are uh, outside of the cello when it comes to aging, when it comes to the, the cigar being able to breathe. Um, but that's me. Give it a try. Test it out yourself. You know what I mean? All right, you guys. I ain't going to talk your year off. Do you love and wife out. Uh, like I always say before I exit, though, smoke good cigars, take your time with the cigars, fill them up, <laughs> uh, dry box if necessary, and if you can smoke something great, something dope today, especially on your day off, get your mind right and refocus, you know? All right, you guys. Do you love and wife out?